Quick PSA, Alvin Flames, the guy who makes all the dope music in my videos, and apparently recently you guys were wondering what the music was that I put in my videos. Well, it's Alvin Flames, and Alvin Flames just released a new album this Friday, so it's out right now, and it's called Kill Alvin. It's on Spotify and wherever else you listen to music, and I think you should give it a shot. It's lo-fi, melodic bops. He did not pay me to say this. I just love his music that much. Please enjoy the video. Death. You can try and ignore it, but much like that rash on your lower back, sooner or later, it comes for us all. Your grandparents, your Tamagotchis, the cast of Glee. Why have so many people from the cast of Glee died? Truly, it is a cruel, cruel world. But unlike flushing a fish or putting a hamster in a shoebox, when your relatives kick the bucket, there is still much work to do. You have to suit up for a good old funeral. Funerals are notably sad and depressing, obviously. You wear all black, you shake crying people's hands, and you have to give a speech about Peepaw where you neglect to mention his racist tirade. But honestly, I think the Western culture surrounding funerals is a bit of a travesty. It shouldn't be a sad experience of weepy adults fighting over a lackluster will and testament. It should be a celebration of the person in that box and what they stood for. Today I'm going to give you my tips, tricks, and advice on how I think we should change funerals for the better, unless you're Catholic. Unless you're Catholic, because those funerals are so goddamn sad and boring that it's, it's just lost without a cause. I thought I would begin by concocting some fun ways we as a culture can change the mentality around the big D, be meaning death. I tried to get folksy with it and I got perverted pretty quickly. So here are my tips and tricks on how to give your next funeral a little bit more sizzle. My first tip that is quick, free, and easy is to just say a little ominous shit to the people around you in the funeral home. Now I do want to say that you don't want to get disrespectful. These people are grieving, obviously, so you don't want to be an asshole about it. So try and stay away from the more tender topics like how the person died or the fact that his little piggies are out in that casket because they don't wear shoes. Instead, historically, I have liked to go the route of righteous fury. When you have a chance to chat with one of the grieving family members, shake their hands, look them dead in the eye, and say with all sincerity, I promise you that his death will be avenged. I will not stop until justice has been served. Now, of course, that person is gonna be confused and a little scared, but that's when you dramatically turn heel and leave the funeral home immediately, maybe lighting a cigarette on your way out. Not only will this create a fun little drama at the funeral home, but it will take the grief off of the family member's mind, if only for a moment, and I believe that's priceless. But the ominous hijinks don't end there. Let's say you are one of the close relatives of the recently departed. How are you supposed to make a little fun out of this, uh, you know, horrible catastrophe? Well, I have found that things just get a little bit more exciting if you simply bring a map to the funeral. Now, it might be kind of hard to find an actual paper map in 2024, but just go to one of your older relatives, uh, uh, you know, glove boxes and open that thing up and maps are gonna flood out of it. I don't know why they keep those things, but you'll, you'll get one from there. Then get a red Sharpie, draw a big old circle anywhere on the map, and then you just have to wait. Eventually, someone will come up to you and ask you if there's anything they can do, because people love to pretend like they wanna help at these occasions. And when that moment arises, it's showtime, baby. You go to the back pocket, whip out the map, and place it in their confused and nervous hands. Tell them to look at the map, travel to the coordinates, and wait for further instruction. Then you just shuffle them off and talk to the next person without making a big deal out of that crazy mindfuck you just put in that poor dude's hand. Now, of course, nothing will come of this. You just made up a crazy B-plot for a character that just showed up for the food. But this little activity will make that certain person think that the person in the box is a little bit more special and fantastical, and I think that's what funerals are really all about. This one is definitely more of a prank, but a classy and respectful one because of the situation at hand. All you have to do is buy a candle and hand it to someone you don't like. Find your least favorite uncle or cousin who showed up because they had to, and the person who died didn't really like them in the first place, so I don't even know why you're here. And I would suggest trying to pinpoint people who showed up late to the funeral because the less time they have to think about what's going on, the better. When they come through the front door, approach them quickly with a pre-lit candle and say, you're late. The ceremony has already arrived, but I saved you one. Get in there. Now, nine times out of ten, they're going to take the candle because at, at funerals, for some reason, they do things with candles and it's not, you know, why would you question it? They take the candle, open the doors to the main event, and expect to see a celebration of life. But instead, it'll just be a room of dimly lit crying people and they're going to be the only assholes sitting in a pew with a candle. A lot of things happen after this moment. Some people might assume they're part of the ceremony because, I mean, he does have a candle, he must have some, you know, position of power. They might think this guy's really into this. He, he, he brought his own candle. He must really have cared about this person in the box. And now that person is in too deep. What do they do? Do they put out the candle and offend people? Like, wh what? Did you give up? Did you give up on the whole purpose of that candle? Or do they hold a burning candle in their hand until the hot wax strips on their knuckles and they get upset? It's a win-win in any situation. Now, this last one's a little tricky because it definitely could be seen as disrespectful, but if you have the right people in the room and the right guy in the coffin, it could go over very well. All you have to do is approach the casket, grip the wood, fall to your knees, and exclaim the following, HE PROMISED TO TAKE ME WITH HIM! Now this will have the people surrounding you crazy confused and honestly very intrigued at the circumstances surrounding this person's death. Did he actually promise that? Was it a suicide pact thing? How much do we know about Uncle Joe and why does his nephew really want to die with him? Now in all honesty, I would probably suggest not doing this one, but if you never want to talk to any of those people in the room again, it's, you know, the world's your oyster. Just make sure the dead person would think that's funny. That's all you gotta do. That's all you're here for is to respect the person who cares about anyone else there. Next segment. But before we get into this next segment, let's take a break and talk about uh, music. 
It's an ad. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna do an ad. Roll the clip. Recently, I've been going on long walks because my therapist says if I sit inside all day with no natural lighting, I will become a hermit. So whenever I do decide to venture out into that horrifying world, I always bring my Raycon Everyday Earbud. Who needs to be spooked by the loud noises of the scary city when I have the sweet rhythms of album flames buttering my eardrums like a sugar plum fairy? I can walk from my apartment to Central Park and back without being aware of the crumbling economy that is New York City, all thanks to these bad boys. So here are all the reasons why I think Raycon is baller. Number one, amazing audio quality for literally half the price of other premium brands. Optimized gel tips that fit comfortably in your ears, whether you be cleaning and dancing around your apartment or eating. For some reason, when I eat with earbuds in, the chewing makes the earbuds fall out. I don't know what that is, but Raycon saves me on that. And how could we forget the 32 hours of battery life with up to eight hours of playtime? That is insane. That's an insane stat. And it also has noise isolating features and it has these lovely tap functions on the earbud. Got me feeling like the secret service when I need to pause my song while picking up a muffin out of bodega that I definitely don't need. I personally need my Raycon to listen to music when I go on my walks because without them it is silence and silence let the thoughts slip through the cracks and it's all screaming. So if you also want to get peace of mind from that weird piece of your mind, I suggest going to buyraycon.com slash big tug for 20% off your purchase as well as free shipping, as well as free shipping. With tens of thousands of five star reviews, you cannot go wrong. Thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this part of the video and also letting me use Raycons. Well, I would be nothing without these in my ears. So there's one thing that people fear more than death, and it's public speaking. That's a real fact. That's a real study that was done. People would rather die than speak publicly. And I don't blame them. People who have the skill set to talk in front of thousands without feeling any shame or embarrassment are all psychopaths, in my opinion. Oops, who put that there? Whoopsie daisy. But in terms of funerals, someone has to draw the short stick and talk about the person who died. I'm gonna run out of terms for that person, by the way. YouTube will strike me if I start using terms like stuff, so I'm gonna use, you know, folksy language. Now, when it comes to eulogies, it's not a fun job, but in my opinion, there's a great opportunity to, you know, have a little fun with it and give the speech the old razzmatazz. So here are my tips on how to give the best and most entertaining eulogy possible. Warning, video for educational purposes only. If you do these things, you'll probably have to deal with a lot of annoying stuff right after from people who once loved you. Acting on these tips is ill-advised. So before you even start the speech, you're gonna wanna set the tone. Much like any other public speaking gig, you wanna let the people know what they're getting into before you really start the show. This is why choosing the correct entrance to make really establishes the vibe for the rest of the speech. There are a few ways to do this correctly. Namely, rolling to the podium in a pair of light up heelys, having a big strong fella you hired off of Craigslist carry you to the front. Or if you're on a budget, several well-timed somersaults will do the job right. All of these fun activities will make previously crying heads pop up from the pews. You want to get the audience to pop. Now that you've gotten their attention, it's time to wow them with your poise and wit. You can always start with a fun joke, perhaps a lighthearted anecdote about the fella in the box. We're gonna call him Pop Pop for the rest of this segment because it's easier that way. But if you really want to razzle dazzle the Spectators, I suggest going with plan B, calling out his enemies and promising that he will haunt them beyond the grave. A powerful statement. As we all know, 10% of funerals are people who actually care, and 90% of funerals are people trying to save face for the other people at the funeral. Odds are, Pop Pop probably hated the majority of people in that room, and it's the eulogizer's job to remind them of that fact. So stating that he will do everything in his power to skip out on the afterlife just to scare the shit out of the people he hated at 2 a.m. in their kitchens is, you know, something that you should be looking into. Another great move, let's call it plan C, is to lie a bunch about the dead person. Just keep lying. Listen, it doesn't matter how well you think you knew Pop Pop, everyone has secrets, and now it's time to lie about those secrets in front of everybody. Legends never die, but boring people do. So now it's time to transition that coffin filler from a boring Joe to a, a spectacular Steve. Bring up that time he found a live hand grenade in an open field and drove 200 miles on his own whim to huck it over the Hoover Dam. An unprovable and remarkable action. Tell him about that time he met Michael Phelps at a local dispensary and convinced him to give one of his medals. And then people are gonna be wondering, am I gonna get that medal in the will? It becomes a little fun thing. Tell him about how he invented the query layout of keyboards because no one knows who actually did that and it might as well be Pop Pop. At this point, people are gonna start to think to themselves, wow, I didn't know Pop Pop that well, but he lived a full and interesting life and he might have been a criminal, but a cool criminal, like, I don't know. The guy's in the town. And to round it out, just make up some life advice that you say that the guy in the casket actually said, but he didn't actually say, but it makes him seem introspective, and that's pretty important. I mean, maybe he did have some catchphrases that were well thought out, but on average, most people don't say very interesting things. So here are some that I have, uh, you know, put together that you can use at your next funeral. Always put a little butter in your instant ramen. You can gleam something deeper in that, but it's actually just good advice. The internet is our new god, and buddy, I'm worshiping on my hands and knees. This one makes you think, hey, did Pop Pop even have a computer? And who could forget Mac Miller's solos? I didn't, when I wrote this script, I didn't think I was gonna be wearing this hoodie, and it makes me seem like a huge fanboy. But I think that's a funny thing to say at any funeral. Then end the speech with a quick statement saying that you're gonna be a big part of the will and that you are extremely litigious. And then say amen. That's all you gotta do.
So traditional funerals are pretty lame, especially the Catholic ones. I'm sorry I keep hitting that note over and over, it's just all I knew and they always suck. But when trying to spice up the funeral game, I found it important to borrow from as many other cultures as possible in order to really get the party started. Is that cultural appropriation? I mean, by definition, that's cultural appropriation. But I'll be sure to be real chill about all the customs and cultures, so I cover all my bases. For example, we have the Madagascar Turning of the Bones, which sounds metal as fuck. So the Malagasy people of Madagascar perform a ceremony called the Famadihana. Famadihana. Fam Alexa, how do you pronounce Famadihana? That's not gonna help. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Also known as the turning of the bones. So in their culture, after a person kicks the bucket, they do the normal, you know, funeral stuff, have a sad party, all that. However, every five to seven years after the person dies, the family holds a little party at their crypt. And I guess these people rock with crypts. I feel like Americans should have crypts more. Then that family exhumes the body of the dead person. Stay with me. Then they wrap the body in the finest of silks and douse them in perfume and or wine for ceremonial purposes And also I imagine it smells like poop a little bit Then the band starts playing the music starts swinging and buddy everyone takes a turn dancing with that silk cocoon with a corpse in it This is example number one. You guys got to stick with me on this Okay, when the party is over the exhumed body is delicately put back in the crypt covered in alcohol and money and gifts Seems like a waste, but you know, I like the idea. And yes, the American brain, this all seems batshit insane, but judge lest ye be judged. Us Americans are really big into burning the shit out of bodies and letting them turn into a pile of dust. And then some people take that pile of dust and dump it in the haunted mansion at Disney World to, to honor their mother who loved Disney so much. And the, the employees just vacuum that shit up. They don't care. At least these people know where their body is. Then we have the sky burials in Mongolia, which is as dope as it sounds. It's not exactly what you think it is though. Are you picturing a, a large cannon? That's what I pictured, it's not that. In its full essence, it's technically just a body rotting on a mountain, but. It, it, it's, there's a lot more to it, so let me explain. So sky burials take place in Tibet, Mongolia, and China. So when the person dies, the body is left in a sitting position for two days while a llama prays over it, which a llama is a Buddhist priest. I'm not gonna make a llama joke. Tucker, do not put a JPEG of a llama up right now. I wasn't gonna do that. Well, I don't know. I don't know what you're gonna be doing, so. Oh, okay. Well, fuck you. You don't know oh, me. You know, you're, it's, I'm so no, sick of No, I'm sick. I'm always, sick of my you know, past self talking like you know what I'm gonna do. How about I just so delete the raw footage? Just, huh? You're gone forever. Your memory's erased. How about that? Okay. Yeah, oh, okay. okay, okay, what? Okay, sir. Goddamn right. God. So sky burial. So after the praying, the spine of the body is broken and it's folded in half, like a greeting card or a lawn chair. The body is then taken and carried to an elevated height while family members chant and beat drums. Nothing like a good walk with a little music. I should have done that Raycon ad now, damn it. Once the body reaches its final resting spot, the hair is shaved and it's chopped up into tiny bits so the vultures can eat it. It's really a full circle thing going on here. Not even the bones are wasted. They're pounded up into a pulp and mixed with flour, tea, and yak butter to feed the crows and hawks. Now that I think about it, this is a dope way about passing on. A real move follow a way to handle this. But sadly, sky burials are very illegal in America, which I think is bullshit, honestly, in my opinion. Not very freedom of you, Mr. Stars and Stripes. If I want my body to be eaten by a grizzly bear, that's my goddamn right. And then we have space memorials. Remember I talked about that giant goofy cannon? That's pretty much what this is. Fun fact, the average American funeral costs $9,000. Womp womp. But for as little as $2,500, you could have your ashes shot into space. A friggin' bargain, if I do say so. There's this company called Celestis uh, that is solely dedicated to conducting space funerals. There are several different packages available from a uh, space joyride that actually brings the ashes back to Earth, and a hundred year orbit that can track the body or ashes in real time. And after a hundred years, it returns back to Earth's atmosphere, but because of the atmosphere, it burns up really quickly, so it's puffed into the sky and you become like a cloud, which is kind of beautiful. All of that sounds neat, but I'm looking for the package that I pass the moon. I don't want to stay in orbit, I want to fly into deep space. I want to I want to get picked up by an ancient alien civilization and they snort me trying to get a quick buzz. That's the way I want to go. And finally, we have Taiwanese funeral strippers. I don't really have to go into this one that deeply. I think you get the point. No one's completely sure how this tradition started, but in Taiwan, they have strippers at their funeral. It's It seemed to be because they want to have a turnout, so they bring strippers, which is, you know, a good way to get a crowd. For example, in 2017, a politician died, and at his funeral, they had 50 strippers dancing on top of Jeeps. So, you know, that I, it seems to be commonplace. It's a little bit uncouth, yes, but it's better than a Catholic priest looking you dead in the eyes and telling you that your gay cousin isn't gonna make it to heaven. So, you know, different strokes for different folks, no pun intended. A man died, Tucker, get it together. Okay, so hopefully you can take everything I've given you and make a funeral that you're about to attend a little bit more fun for you and everyone involved. Really more for you, but I hope you take these to heart. Just make sure to live a long, full life and surround yourself with people who actually give a shit about you and is gonna make your funeral as fun as possible. New videos every Saturday, like, comment, and subscribe. Here's uh, a clip of my brother calling me in the middle of filming this and he's just a nuisance. I'm filming right now. <sighs> Can you check if Helldivers is opening for you? Your hair looks nice. Thank you. People at work um, are very comfortable talking about me going bald. First of all, are you clicking on the shortcut or are you going into Steam? No, I did both. I did both. That was uh, the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen. <laughs>